A litany of avoidable failures, just some of the words of sharp criticism from the head of a drawn-out public inquiry examining what went wrong with the Edinburgh Trams project. The trams were finally introduced to the city streets in 2014, five years late and £400 million over budget. Lord Hardy, tasked with leading that inquiry, was today unsparing in his assessment of who bore responsibility for those failures. The report contains criticisms of many companies, organisations and individuals. But today I wish to highlight the actions of TOI, the City of Edinburgh Council and Scottish ministers, whose acts or omissions were principally responsible for the failure to deliver the project on time, within budget. We assess the inquiry report with the Daily Record's political editor, Paul Hutchin. Paul, the bulk of the criticism is aimed at the train firm Thai. Why did they come in for so much flack? Well, I wasn't surprised by that. Uh, Thai was responsible for delivering this project. And it seems like from Lord Hardy's report that they made a mess of it from the very beginning. Um, if you read his report, it's littered with criticisms of this body. Uh, he said that uh, they departed from the, the agreed procurement strategy and that there were failings in terms of the design process, that they didn't work collaboratively with Edinburgh Council and other key bodies, and they even withheld information from Audit Scotland. So from the perspective of this particular body, it was a damning report, and I don't think that will surprise many people who've dealt with them over the years. And the SNP government back in 2007 wanted to, to scrap this project, of course. They also came in for criticism, as well as Edinburgh City Council. That's right. Um, Scottish Government was heavily criticised in this report. If you go back to 2007, um, as you say, the SNP government wanted to scrap the project, but they then had a vote and they lost the vote, so they agreed to carry on. But what seemed to happen after they won the vote was that uh, the Scottish Government essentially withdrew Transport Scotland officials from a key board. And that was a decision that was heavily criticised by Lord Hardy, uh, basically saying it was an abdication and it deprived the project of key expertise. Now, what happened then was, four years later, Transport Scotland, realising that the project was in crisis, um, got back involved. And then John Swinney, according to Lord Hardy, started to meddle in the project and started to pull the strings uh, behind the scenes. And so that understandably created a great deal of confusion about what the role of the Scottish Government was in the project. Were they in? Were they out? Uh, and again, that, uh, I have to say those sections were pretty scathing for the Scottish Government. And then, of course, Edinburgh Council as well, the, the sponsor of the Trams project, um, they were accused of providing councillors with misleading information. Not a good charge. It was scathing about a, a lot of bodies, as you say. Uh, it didn't pull any punches, did it? And that's not always the case with these public inquiries. No, I mean, I've read a number of public inquiry reports in the past, and invariably they tend to fudge issues. They couch them in quite lawyerly language and pull their punches. But this one, Lord Hardy was taking no prisoners at all. Um, and I feel like uh, uh, him and his team will be very happy with the work they've produced. I don't think anyone could accuse them of being part of a cover-up. Of course, the Scottish Government doesn't see it that way. They think it was too long and they don't agree with the criticisms and they've made that clear. So um, even though um, you might be forgiven for thinking that this would put a full stop on the Trams debacle, I suspect that it will rumble on for a few more days. So what are the main recommendations then that Lord Hardy has made in this report? Well, he made a number. Some of them are quite technical, um, which probably won't be of interest to the layman. But one I did find interesting was this suggestion that uh, a new statutory offence should be created um, in terms of providing misleading information. Now, that was clearly a dig at the arm's length body and the City of Edinburgh Council, because that was a criticism levelled at both those organisations in the main report. So I think that Lord Hardy really had a bee in his bonnet about what he, he found in the course of this mammoth investigation. And if a new criminal offence was to uh, be created, that would be quite something. Now, Scotland does seem to have problems with these public procurement projects, doesn't it? The building of the Scottish Parliament, the ferries fiasco. Why do you think that is? Well, all these projects 
uh, were very different in nature. But uh, I think ordinary voters, taxpayers, will look at devolution and think it's been sort of pockmarked by disastrous procurement uh, bungles like this. And I think that in the cold light of day, when you look at the cost of this Edinburgh Trams project, I think it was over £800 million for a tram line between um, the airport and York Place in Edinburgh. Was it really worth it? Um, nearly a billion pounds to help people get to an airport, which in the context of the climate crisis really looks like an odd decision. So um, although uh, people will be scratching their heads as to how it costs so much, I think maybe we should also be looking at whether some of these projects are worth it in the first place. OK, Paul Hutchin, we appreciate your time on Scotland tonight. Thank you.